Welcome back to the Lyak's Purana, the Geography series. So far, we were discussing upon the various concepts of geography through previous year questions. Now, in today's session, we are going to look at this particular topic with respect to the different geophysical features that the Arctic and the Antarctic glaciers, the Himalayan glaciers, the ocean currents, and the monsoons. Now, when you look at these phenomena and when you look at these features, what happens is again coming to the note making. As we already discussed, that with respect to this geography, the note making is more in convergence with the prelims examination. But the point of consideration with respect to such a topic is that now you observe any of these questions that are asked, it is not sticking only to the concept. They are asking about one with respect to the concept. And once they are asking or once they are emphasizing upon the concept, now they are asking about the respective application of that concept. This is one nature of questioning from these topics that are generally observed across the years. Even in this year's 2022, you would see such a kind of concept as well as the corresponding application. Because in 2022 GS1, there was a question that was asked with respect to the oceanic currents and its impact with respect to the fishing industry, which is again a repeated question from 20, 2015. Right? So, the notes making is going to be in with respect to these aspects, that is one concept, the second one is going to be the applicative aspect of those concepts. Now, looking at these previous year questions, it is a question on Arctic and Antarctic, how do the melting of Arctic ice and glaciers, and see this is the concept, and here we have to see that how is it going to impact to one, the weather pattern as well as the human activities. Second, the Himalayan glaciers again a question, and impact, its impact on water resources. Himalayan glaciers and the symptoms with respect to climate change. Now, oceanic currents and water masses with respect to the marine life, with this or origin of ocean currents and with respect to the regional climates, fishing and navigation. So, when we look at this, again, the monsoon climate and again with respect to the population aspect, right? So, behavior of Indian monsoon and changing humanizing landscape. One particular common pattern that we have seen as we have seen, one is the concept and the corresponding impact. And this impact is especially with respect to the environmental impact on a larger sense. And the other aspect is with respect to the impact on the human life. Human life. This environment may be the terrestrial ecosystem as well as your aquatic ecosystem. So, this is the general observation, right? Now, let us move on to one of the sample questions within this that explain the factors responsible for origin of oceanic currents. How do they influence the regional climate, fishing and navigation? So, the same pattern that we follow, the initial aspect we are going to see is what are the keywords with respect to this question. Now, when you look at the keywords, they are asking about the factors responsible for origin of oceanic currents. This is one aspect. Then, how do they influence the regional climate, fishing and navigation? That means, they are asking about the oceanic currents and the corresponding implications on climate, fishing and navigation. And when you look at these keywords, these are the keywords. Now, the immediate part that we do is how do we structure this particular question on the basis of the keywords. And when we look at the structuring of this question on the basis of the keywords, we look at the structure that in the initial part, we have to talk about what are the factors for its origin. And simple classification for such a kind of factors is these factors can be what? Causative factors. And these factors can be what? The modifying factors. This can be the simple aspect. Then once we discuss about these factors, then we can talk about what is its influence. Its influence on what? Its influence on A, the regional climate, B, with respect to the fishing, C, with respect to the navigation. On each of these aspects, we have to say that what is going to be the impact with respect to the oceanic currents. This is the structure. Then moving on to our second part, that is the content part. And when you talk about this content part, it is with respect to again, yes. Now, when you look at this content part, okay, yes, this is going to be the content. And when you look at the content part, it is that explain the factors responsible for oceanic currents. In the same question, in the introduction, you can define that what is going to be the oceanic currents. And once we discuss about these oceanic currents and the corresponding concept of oceanic currents in the introduction, then we can talk about the factors and as, as we discussed in the structure, we can call it as causative factors. The causative factors can be what? 
the wind systems, the Coriolis force, the thermohaline circulations or it might be with respect to the variation of your STD relation that is existing that is salinity, the temperature and the density that kind of causative factors. Then once we talk about the causative factors then we talk about what are the modifying factors. And once we try to examine what are these modifying factors, the major modifying factor that we see in the context of oceanic currents is the configuration. Especially when we talk about the west wind drift, when we talk about the Peruvian current and the Falkland current which is splitting because of the configuration of your South American region, that is a classic example for this. Right? With respect to wind system, we can talk about the Somalia current which keeps on shifting its direction due to wind systems. Right? So, these can be the factors, you have to substantiate this with the examples. Then, influence. This influence with respect to what? With respect to the regional climate. And when we look at the regional climate, you would have a different impact with respect to your warm current as well as cold current. And when we look at the corresponding impacts of the warm current, it will have a moderating impact. It is going to have a moderating impact because that is going to also lead to a sort of precipitation. Because when we look at the warm current, you know that the temperatures are going to be warmer. As it is warmer, you know that the moisture holding capacity is going to be higher. When the moisture holding capacity is going to be higher, comparatively, there is a conducive condition for condensation to occur. When you have a conducive condition for condensation to occur, automatically there is a phenomenon called precipitation which follows, which moderates the climate. And when you talk about the cold currents, we know that it would have a desiccating effect. The fundamental aspect with respect to desiccating effect is the moisture holding capacity of this particular current is very, very minimalistic. And when we have a minimal moisture holding capacity, automatically the condensation process and the precipitation process is going to be affected. Apart from this, we would also see there is an element of descending winds that are present over this particular region as these cold current regions are going to be characterized with high pressure conditions. Now, because of this, what happens? You would see a desert formation. That is another kind of impact that is created. Then when we move on to the impact on fishing, we know the fishing can happen especially in the regions where you have the warm current and the cold current meeting. And when we have this convergence region, when we have this meeting region, when we have this transition region, you would see that the, all the nutrients are present. It provides a conducive condition for the churning of the nutrients and it would result in fertile regions for fishing. Apart from that, we also have a phenomenon called upwelling which occurs on the western side of South American region. That can also be one of the impacts on fishing. The navigation. With navigation, one particular aspect is we can talk about the warm current. And when you talk about the warm current, for example, the North Atlantic Drift. The North Atlantic Drift keeps on operating the ports of, ports of the western side of your United Kingdom. That's a classic example for the impact. Then apart from this, the another impact we see is there can be a negative impact with respect to navigation for the reason when there is intermixing of your warm current and cold current there is a kind of temperature inversion condition that is created and because of this there is a relation that is existing and it, it would result in fog formation which would hinder the navigation. Classic example. Then once we talk about the influence we can conclude that the, with the impact of climate change there is also changing phenomena with respect to these oceanic currents and the corresponding impact. Right? Straightforward explanation, nothing much in this. Right? Then this is with respect to the content. The plus one strategy that we generally discuss as part of your Lax Purana, the plus one strategy in this particular question can be the mapping. And certainly the plus one strategy in this particular question is going to be the various examples that you substantiate to give the regional influence with respect to the climate, fishing and navigation. Because when you are talking about fishing, we have to certainly talk about the Newfoundland, we have to certainly talk about Kurushio and Oishio. And we also have to talk about when navigation, we have to talk about North Atlantic Drift. So all these aspects have to be discussed and that's a very, very simple question and this question has been repeated in UPSC mains examination 2022. But they had asked only for what is its influence on the fishing. They did not ask about the other dimensions, right? Now let's have one practice question. The practice question from this particular section can be that 49th question, how will the melting of Himalayan glaciers have a far reaching impact on the water resources of India? For model answer of such a question, please refer to the link that is provided in the description. Thank you.